Welcome back to Rackspace's live coverage from Austin, Texas at the Tech Gathering of the Year. You know, the place where Twitter found its wings. Foursquare checked in and Siri found her voice. It's Robert Scoble and friends live. The Open Cloud Experience. Hey, welcome back to the Rackspace Open Cloud Experience. Uh, this one's going to be a big one because we got uh, one of the key guys at Salesforce, my friend Mark Benioff is uh, always pushing the edge, but his CMO is here with us, and we're going to talk about the future of marketing and what it means in the age of context and where Salesforce is all going. So, so who are you? <laughs> thanks for uh, having me. Who are um, you? <laughs> and thanks for having me on Monday when I can't talk. And uh, either yeah, can I. To, yeah, so, so we're going to muddle We sound this. like old men with gray beards talking about the way things were. Um, we were so partying I'm, last night, huh? Yeah, great time last night. So I'm Michael Lazaro. I'm the chief marketing officer of the Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Yeah. Marketing is Salesforce's next billion dollar business. The company spent a billion dollars on acquisitions to really provide technologies to marketers and we're starting that journey. We started with sales and we kind of grew that business over half of the CRM market, number one sales app, launch service. We now have 34,000 customers in a few years who are using that. And marketing is this new frontier where CMOs are going to spend more than CIOs at some point and CTOs on technology, so we're really psyched. So we have a lot of things going on here in the, yes. in the space, which is sort of how marketing is today. It's really yeah. noisy. I mean, I, I watch a lot of people and a lot of companies on Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and LinkedIn and other places, Quora and uh, yeah. Hacker News, all, all sorts of different places that we hear messages. It's, uh, is that the well, challenge today, is how to punch through that noise? Yeah, everyone talks about it as, you know, you gotta listen, and we believe you gotta listen first, but I really think you have to filter first, right? Listening, there's so much noise, as you call it. So every company's gotta listen, if they wanna be a customer company, if they wanna be customer focused. If they don't, they don't have to listen, but they're probably gonna go out of business. So it starts with listening, and then you start with engagement and content and your social ads. And what's really interesting about South by Southwest this year, is it's the first year that we've had marketers, CMOs, with their CIOs going around to meetings. So you look at any of the companies we've worked with, uh, look at Unilever, who's here, you know, 30 people here. You have Mark McLennan, who is a CIO globally, with Babs and Luis and Debbie Weinstein, going to talk to big companies, small companies, all types of companies. And that's a huge change because, you know, we talk about CMOs spending more and CMOs love to buy, right? Yeah. This, Unilever spends six billion a year. They buy a lot of stuff, but it's how do they do it in a way that works with their CIOs because the CIOs understand how to procure technology, how to deploy technology. And that's really where this is all going. Well, you just said a lot uh, in a, a few sentences. I, I've been at, at South by Southwest since it was 500 people, mostly web developers, right? Mm -hmm. Or creative people, uh, the people who played with Illustrator and people who built uh, web pages. And now we're having the CIO and the CMO show up here. That that denotes a little bit of how the shift happened around the time Twitter got hot here. Yep. Is that what you're seeing as well? Well, I think every brand, every marketer, every technologist has to have part art, part science. So you know, we wake up with these in our hands, these phones, we go to sleep with them in our hands. You know, we're looking down all day, you know, the average you know, person who uses kind of the business user will spend these 14 micro moments a day looking at their devices. And I think because of that, every marketer is a hacker, every marketer is a developer, every marketer is a creative professional. And you have to have those muscles, if you don't, you're not gonna survive in this distributed app world where you have to be in your customer's pocket. Yeah. You have to be a customer company. You have to focus on the customer like never before. And if you do that, you've seen the ability to grow from you know, companies like Unilever that's expanding market share just by focusing on that customer. As we move forward, I think that it's the marketer and the CIO, the chief information, chief technology officer together that is gonna grow these businesses. The other thing that's happening is the marketer used to come and think about marketing, classic marketing, right? Web pages and mobile and apps. My conversations here are about call centers. 
They're about how do we empower our sales fleet with better content, better tools. Yeah. So all of a sudden sales, service, yeah. marketing, the apps you build, how you work and collaborate, all of that is in the domain of the well, marketing. You hit on a few things. First of all, this is why I like talking to Salesforce because you guys, more than any other company, get your fingers into the business, the world of business worldwide. I mean, I, you know, Mark Alves is talking to Toyota and talking yeah. to General Motors or, or some train company or, so, you know, he's always out there. And, and th therefore, you guys have a good pattern recognizer for what's happening on, yeah. on, the, on the show floor. This year at South By, there hasn't been a killer app. You know, it had, in 2007, it was the year of Twitter, right? Yeah. And 2009 was the year of Foursquare. And 2011 was the year of Highlight. And 2010 was the year of... Uh, group me, right? Yep. Uh, but there hasn't been a killer app this year. Uh, there has been, though, uh, a, a range of apps in the productivity space that have gotten hot this in this spring, right? Um, uh, oh, uh, Tempo from mm -hmm. uh, Sir SRI came out, and uh, Mailbox, and uh, uh, Sunrise, yep. and uh, Taskbox, and all these new productivity apps for our mobile phones. Or Task have, Rabbit. Task, well, there, there's a whole here, range. Yeah. But the, so there's something happening with productivity, which is exactly what you nailed. Yep. You know, people are trying to empower their teams to do more, be more tied in, help customers in a deeper yep. way, right? I mean, so thank you for your comments about Salesforce. I mean, we have always, both at my former company, Buddy Media, which was acquired by Salesforce, and at Salesforce, we spend our time out in the field. You know, Mark, is visiting clients all the time. And yeah. what for him, it's a way to kind of take in the information and then put it together and envision the future. What we're seeing and what we saw at CES when we talked and when we were there is every product is now connected to the internet. So it's not just, you know, we know our customers are connected. We wake up with our social graph and our phone. We know our employees are, they come to work and they spend time on you know, LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook at work. We know our partners are and our vendors. For the first time in the last few years, and it's really you know, hitting a crescendo, every product is connected. And when every product's connected, we think that the company has to be behind it. So if your refrigerator, which is internet enabled and tells you what's in it, if it breaks, the expectation is that Samsung or whoever made the refrigerator will automatically dispatch a service professional or call you and say, I see it's not working. Did you lose power? Did it break? How can I help you? And that bridge between the connected products, the customer and the company is really what we're focused on. We're focused on how do you treat every customer and every touch point as a customer? And the fact they're a customer, that is what's important. Well, uh, you know, I just talked to Mark Andreessen about this and he lit up when I said, in the future, every company or every every company will know their customer in very deep detail, and today they don't. They don't. You know, I, I went to uh, Aspen Snowmass and met with their execs. That's the biggest ski resort in the world, right? Uh, well, they know sort of where you are on the mountain because you're carrying an RFID tag in their ticket, right? Sure. But they really don't know your Facebook. They don't know your cloud score. They don't know your your favorite meals. Well, the you last know, they're, generation. They're just starting to get that kind of data, right? Yeah, I mean, the last generation of like customer data was really loyalty based, right? You walk into a casino, they know everything about you in that casino, right? Yeah. Like where you're gambling, where you're eating, where you're staying. You walk out of that casino and you're an anonymous cookie, if they're lucky, email address or cell phone number. Yeah. And I think what's happening is this revolution, this customer revolution, where you're bringing your corporate and purchase information that you have together with social and campaign information to say that this person, Robert, is a very attractive customer, has spent a lot of money with us, so when you call the call center, or when you walk into a store and there are 10 people, they know that they should help you because you're a good customer, you're yeah. influential, versus the window shoppers or the people who have shopped and returned everything. Well, you know, the world is changing. I, I use this cute little app called Highlight. You know, it got yeah, a know little Highlight. bit hot here last year. But everybody says it's not going mainstream. But I walked into Bloomingdale's in New York, and the head salesperson was on Highlight. Yeah. So she knew I was coming into the store, because it only shows people yeah, who are within 100 yards of you or 200 yards of you. 
So she knew I was close by, and we started messaging. And it's like, hey, man, I need, I need some help buying yeah. some jeans. Where, first of all, where are they? I, I don't know where they are in Bloomingdale's five-story building, right? You know, and j just getting that answer back yeah. helped make my experience better. And right? how much better would it have been if not only you're at the store, if you needed jeans, you were able to message them or FaceTime them and say, "Hey, I need jeans. You know, where should I go?" They're like, "Don't worry about it. We'll bring the jeans to you." Yeah. Right? Are you gonna tweet that out? Are you gonna shout, "Oh my, I'm at my desk in Half Moon Bay." They're here with their, they brought my store from Bloomingdale's here. And I think when- And that's happening. Uh, tomorrow, it's happening all uh, the time. Tomorrow I'm interviewing uh, um, an exec from eBay, who the e eBay Now app in San Francisco, you push a button and they'll bring it's shit to your, to your uh, place awesome. of work. It's awesome. Everyone, everyone treated customer service as the back office. Who's doing customer service again? Like, it wasn't important. Yeah. Now, customer service is your sales force. It's your retailers who, you know, I was talking to a luxury retailer. Half of the time that their store associates are in store, they're not doing anything because their products are really expensive. Why don't they have a mobile app where they press it, where they have five customers, they can call and say, hey, we have this new inventory, come and check it out, I'll give you a private tour of it, right? Why aren't they the sales people doing outbound marketing? Why aren't companies doing it? Very simply, their data is stored in archaic systems that are dying. And if they unify their data and create a next generation customer platform that can tee up the data through APIs that make and mobilize it and push it to the edges, yeah. whatever they come up with as a great idea, they can deploy. You can't deploy it without having the data teed up. So right by my house is a Ritz Carlton, right? One of the best service organizations in the Amazing. world, right? They have a new iPad app that runs their restaurant. And it's really cool because when, when you go up there and uh, say, hey, you know, I, I want a table, well, it's going to be half an hour because it's busy. Yep. It's a Saturday and it's sunny. Everybody's there, right? And they'll say, give me your phone number, and they, and they can text your phone when the, when the table's ready, yeah. which is cool so they don't have to hand you that stupid puck that used to. No, it's know, amazing. Get. But I, I, I go, well, can we go one step further? Can I text the iPad so that I can tell you half an hour before I get there yeah, that I'm coming? Not? <laughs> not only, well, it's a great idea because I think we're, we have a lot of clients who are thinking about the next generation retail in their stores and they sell through retailers, manufacturers. And why is it that if you're in store, you should be able to FaceTime and text. You should be able to take, if you're a company, your sales team and through people's mobile phones, be in store. So a shopper is shopping they should be able to contact you visually, right? Whatever they want, FaceTime, call, email, text, and say, hey, I'm considering your product. Tell me what I should know. Is it gonna work for a 13-year-old, yeah. right? And companies aren't thinking like that, but customer companies are. Yeah. Companies that wanna connect their employees and their partners and their customers and their products to the internet and actually stand behind it, those companies are. What else are you are you seeing? You know, here's another example. I was at a Napa winery talking to the execs there, uh, Castello Diamorosa. I love your life, by the way. Uh, it's a great life. Yeah, like Ritz <laughs> and wine. It's sort of like your it. life because uh, yeah. you get to go and meet all the coolest companies in the world and uh, hang out with the execs and talk about strategy I love it. I love and it. where the world's going. But while we're sitting there, well, first of all, they they showed us what they're doing with uh, social media. They have an Instagram tour, for instance. So a big, big uh, winery, why do they have an Instagram tour? He goes, well, we know that people who come in with mobile phones and who yep. are on Instagram are, are going to be our brand ambassadors. They're going to be the ones that push the experience of coming to this yeah. winery out to the world, right? So they put you on a special tour where you get to see the torture chamber that they built, you know, and get a, yeah, you know, like get a visual tour of the winery before you start drinking all their great wine. And where I'm going with this is customer service now, uh, on that level, you're going to be tracked. You're, and not tracked as in stocked. Not, you not, want to be tracked. Well, you want to be stocked so that people know how to serve you. But you're going to be put in, are you an Instagram guy? You go on the visual tour. Totally. Are you a high, uh, a high net worth individual that is going to spend $2,000 in wine here? 
we're going to take you right to the reserve room, right? Yeah, and totally. not waste your time because we want to get you right to the reserve room so you can buy that expensive wine. And different people are going to be put into different uh, shoots. Well, you can't do this. You can't do targeted marketing one to one at scale yeah. without having the system. So it's a great example because the first generation of social media is put a hashtag on it, let people tweet it and Instagram it. Well, Instagram wasn't around, but tweet and Facebook. And then the next version was, hey, let's, let's let people log in with Facebook and let's build social profiles. And as we provide value to customers, we're going to you know, get information because we're providing so much value. So we're going to build up the data set that we have. And it's getting really smart about the customer experience, the customer database, and how to activate that across all of your channels, paid, owned, earned, in-store, out-of-store, outdoor advertising. I mean, you look at the outdoor ad business, like, that whole business is going digital. Instead of putting stuff up, it's all screens. If you have their app, why aren't they targeting an ad to you right on that screen, right? And so everything's going digital. Everything's going to be able to be targeted like a digital ad. When the Apple TV, the real one, the one that's going to be on the wall, hooked up to the internet and not necessarily cable, is there, your ads will be targeted to you based on your Facebook data. Right? So all of a sudden, TV ads are being personalized to you. You go to the store. And the, the difference between where we were when I started, we started in the internet, and I started my first company in 1994, Telnet, Gopher, all this like email stuff, is it used to be an anonymous internet. We have real identity, immutable identity. And what we're talking about is we love walking into restaurants, and they know us. Welcome yeah. back. Your drink's ready. How was your week? Right? or haven't seen you in three months, or did your wife love the jacket you bought her if it was a retail store? Yeah. And that's the experience that we're going to everywhere. So the Google Glass is just starting to hit the, the top end of the market. You know, here at the Rackspace Open Cloud Experience, I, I've hit several places where I'm a little frustrated because a customer comes in, I, I know their name, they're wearing a badge, yep. but I don't know their data that, that's in Salesforce, right? Because we have a Salesforce database at Rackspace. We know, you know, yeah. if you call a call center, you, something gets put into Salesforce, right? Yeah, about thank you. you for being a big customer. We, yeah. we love that. Well, you're a customer of ours, I know, too. We're so great we're, relationship. we're like <laughs> going at it. But uh, I want to use the glass and stare at their badge and see in the glass yeah. their data from Salesforce. And then I also want to know who in the building is is one of the guys who helped them or is there somebody here because then i can say hey you deal with joe every day on the phone he's sitting over yeah. there you know let's let's introduce you and that makes a customer happier well clearly right? that's the next generation of mobility it's in-car dashboards it's google glass it's it's basically everything you could do on a cell phone which is a barrier between a conversation so if i'm talking to you like this it's not going to be a very good conversation but if we could have a human conversation that is enabled and made better because of technology, that's great. I, I, you probably saw some of those people last night um, at the W who are wearing it. Um, it looked very cool. It looked like they were going to shoot us with a laser and kill us. Um, <laughs> so it was a little scary also. But uh, It's a little dorky. It's just mobility, right? Yeah. And it's dorky today, but it's. I assume gonna, everyone's going to have it. Just like you know, the cell phone, when it first came out, it was kind of dorky. Remember you had car phones? Yeah. There weren't cell phones. You had a car phone. It was a phone that was installed it physically. Was big, yeah. And you'd, be, you'd pick this thing up and be like, yo, what's up, right? And did we ever think we would be at a point where it's like the car is a phone. The yeah. car is a Facebook app. The car is just an app that platform that you can program with anything. Yeah. And that's, what it, that's not the future. That was announced at CES. Like that's Ford's announcement. Yeah. And the world is going to kind of apps and the cloud and social, mobile, local, all working together and big data and community, both internal and external, all powered by what? The cloud. Yeah. And your data has to be in the cloud to take advantage of all of these well, instances. Well, there's the cloud and what's really going on right now is the cloud is bifurcated into little silos, little tiny clouds all yeah. over the place. You know, the Four square, square Cloud doesn't talk to the Salesforce Cloud, doesn't talk to uh, the Rackspace Cloud, doesn't talk to this cloud. 
how are we going to connect all those so that we can build these really magical customer experiences? In the yeah, so, I mean, I'm not a believer that there is just one cloud, right? Like, what are clouds or computers hooked yeah. up to the internet that are hosted somewhere? It would be great if we just, like, threw them into the sky, right? And we didn't have to do anything. It would probably be cooler. We wouldn't have to heat them because it's cooler all the way up there. Um, why don't we build stuff that we just put them up there? But the point of all this is that you need a unified data set around what's important to you. So you're not gonna have five different data sets for your employees. You're just not, right? We use Workday, it's a great company, it helps us keep data. Like, I know who, what the birthdays are of my team members. Yeah. You're not gonna have your customer debt all over the place like it is today. Like, it's crazy. Like, yeah. you know, if you look at companies, they may have 48, oh, I have one company, not, there's 48 different silos of customer data and we're working to bring it all together. and put it into a cloud that you can access through bi-directional APIs, read, write, and it's just available to you, the business owner, and that's what this is about. And you know, will Foursquare be your primary business cloud? Probably not, but will, for a consumer, everything of theirs is moving to the cloud, will that be where you keep kind of where you visited and restaurants you like? Potentially, that's the play there. And so as everything moves to the cloud, businesses that don't move their business to the cloud, Businesses that have their employees and their you know, partners, their customers connected, but aren't connected to them, are gonna get crushed. Like, we have like, big companies that will no longer exist. We're seeing the death of Wintel right now. Hopefully, you know, Xbox is a great product. Hopefully for Microsoft, Xbox you know, c continues to grow, because yeah. a lot of our, I'm seeing it every day. Like, the, I am not gonna continue with this kind of WAN, LAN, you know, Wintel environment, and what it is is BYOD, bring your own device to work. Yeah. You wouldn't take a job or work with a company where they said, use this phone or else you can't work here. Be yeah. like, are you crazy? Nope. Like, no, like I'm not doing that, see ya. Like that's what, what we, the world I bring my own uh, email address to work, which really uh, is mind blowing yeah. for, for the IT department, right? But I mean, you have created a connected ecosystem. Yeah. You're connected to your customers, to your partners, right? to all of your vendors and all your products for sure. I mean, you know, Rackspace. The, and I think what it is is wherever Robert Scoble goes, your ecosystem comes, your connected environment, your connected you know, cloud. You know, it's a Scoble cloud comes with you. you. You don't go anywhere, you don't take a job, you don't travel without everything behind you and that's what great companies are about, what great people are about. You know, you look at kind of why people perform, I think someone spoke about it here, and high performers, if you look at, and they looked at like Tiger Woods and Nadal and all these, you know, ballet, why they perform is they had a community. They were connected, they had partners. Everywhere they went, they had their people with them. Business is the same thing. Very cool. Thanks for spending some time with me. I know you're, you. you have a really busy, crazy schedule. Oh, I love this. And, uh, this is what I love doing. I, I love doing it too. So yeah, <laughs> that's why we do it. it but I know you got to go, and I, I got to go eat lunch. <laughs> it's Monday morning at uh, South by Southwest. Thanks for joining us uh, at the Rackspace Open Cloud Experience. It's been great. We're going to be back, I think, at 3 p.m., maybe a little bit earlier, but at 3 p.m. with another interesting uh, innovator in the, in the world from South by Southwest. Thank you for joining us. When Rackspace's live coverage from Austin continues, we'll show you the future in real time. Rackspace, backed by fanatical support, bringing you live coverage from South by Southwest daily. Hmm, so good, it hurts. The Open Cloud Experience.